What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And today we got another juicy, juicy SCE, man. Right when I saw this thumbnail, it reminded me if you guys have seen Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one, you know, Johnny Depp, he was in that first one when he actually died when he was like in his bed and he was a chillaxing and then Kruger gets him in the stomach and the blood spurts out. That's what I just imagined when I saw this thumbnail because it just looks like a guy in a pit of his own blood or like a, a pit or a crater of blood and he's trying to like escape so um, man that give me some nostalgic feels because i love horror so um yeah just having that feeling i had to get into this one man so if you guys are excited about this scp and you guys do like it please remember to smash that like button and also remember to smash the sub button as well to join the family if you're not already part of it we're pretty small right now so we'll love to have you jump on the train because we're going to keep on chugging away and also remember in the comment section below let me know what you guys think about this scp and any answers you guys have to some of the questions i might have for this scp towards this episode so with all the way i don't waste any more time man let's get straight into this heat Alrighty, SCP-002, The Living Room. Oh, I forgot to say that in the intro, but you guys should already know. <laughs> Let's get it started. A pair of SCP Foundation researchers open the door of the containment cell and find themselves staring at something unlike anything they've ever seen before. Sitting in the middle of the room is a giant lump that appears to be made of what can only be described as flesh. The two look at each other in disbelief. Just what is this thing? They circled the huge blob, looking it over, wondering what on earth it could be. One of the researchers finally gets the courage to actually feel it. He finds that it's warm to the touch. And does he detect some slight movement? He slowly moves to place his ear against it to listen, but a sudden shudder from the mask sends him jumping back in fright. Just then, the other researcher calls to him from the other side of the sphere. It sounds like he has found something. As he approaches, he too sees what caused his partner to call. If someone's in this flesh, bro, oh my god. Fall out. There, in the middle of this tumorous ball, is a door. What? It's a circular iron hatch, the kind sealed by a valve. And it's open. Now the researchers are really confused. A massive lump of living flesh is strange enough. But why does it have a door? One of the researchers peeks inside. Is that a couch they see? And a table? Does someone live in this thing? Oh my Things god. Things are getting beyond strange. The two researchers look up at the observation window where their supervisor is watching them. The supervisor <laughs> does not hesitate. He nods at them, and the researchers know what they must do. What do you gotta Rock, do? Paper, scissors, Oh, shoot. choose who's going in. The researcher who lost winces. He knew Whoa. that coming to work at the <clears throat> SCP Foundation meant that he would be dealing with some strange, dangerous, and disgusting anomalies. <laughs> but he never imagined he would have to climb inside a giant orb of meat. His partner opens the hatch all the way and offers a hand to help him, knowing he has no other option. Damn. The researcher steps inside. Inside, the air is hot, thick, and moist, like a cramped gym that's had too many bodies exerting themselves oh, on a the warm, heck? humid day. He walks through the short entranceway, and his eyes adjust to the dim light to find that he's standing in the middle of a cozy little room. A single, small lamp on a table is giving off just enough light for him to see that the room is sparsely furnished, with a few pieces including a small couch and a twin bed. Outside, his partner calls to him, asking what he can see. Hmm. As the researcher turns to answer, the door snaps shut. Yo. The valve spins on its own, locking itself tight. Over. Try as he might, the researcher can't get it to budge. He bangs on the door and yells. Is he all... I'm assuming maybe it's going to flood it with blood? We shall see. Right in there. So, well, he or she, uh, this massive ball of meat, flesh, per se, so... Everything okay? His only response is a muffled scream from inside the ball of flesh. He keeps pulling at the door, twisting the valve with all of his strength, but it won't move. The sounds of gurgles and wet sloshing come from inside the meaty growth. An alarm starts to sound as he strains against the door, exerting himself so hard that he feels like a vein in his head might burst. Oh my god. Suddenly, the valve loosens, and a sudden lack of resistance causes him to fall to the floor. The valve spins on its own, and the door swings open once again. The ball of flesh is quiet 
once more. What the researcher happened? picks himself up off the ground and slowly, carefully, peeks inside. Hello? Are you okay? Is anyone in there? There's no response. That is, until a blast of hot air comes rushing out of the hatch, blowing the researcher's hair back. When it's over, he peeks inside again. His fellow researcher is nowhere to be seen. Inside is the same couch, bed, and table with a small lamp. Wow. But there's something new there, too. Across from the couch, where there was nothing before, is a small television. Yo, this creature eats the humans and then turns them into flesh furniture. Bro, this guy got a sick mind. But, hey, that's cheap living. You don't have to go to the store. They're coming to you, bro. Smart move, man. Smart move, ball of flesh. While this may seem strange, it's just another day at the SCP Foundation. For real. Where anomalous objects and creatures are studied and contained, including SCP-002, also known as the Living Room. Living Room. SCP-002 is the designation given to a large, tumorous, fleshy growth. It's roughly spherical, with a circumference just over 15 meters, giving it an estimated volume of around 60 meters cubed. Located on one side is an iron valve hatch, similar to what might be found on an old submarine, hmm. which leads into the interior of the ball. Those who step inside are surprised to discover a small room <laughs> that resembles it looks a like. low-rent <laughs> studio apartment, complete with furniture and even a small window. Wow, a bone? The side of the ball, Yo. the flesh shows no windows, and indeed no openings at all, save for the iron hatch. The furniture in the room displays no anomalous properties, Though examination has revealed that the furniture appears to be constructed of sculpted bone, woven hair, and other biological substances, all coming from human bodies. Analysis of samples taken from the furniture has shown each to be constructed from independent Damn. and fragmented DNA sequences, several of which correspond to SCP research personnel who have been lost inside of SCP-002. To date, the living room has been responsible for seven members of staff going missing. At the same <sighs> This foundation could be this foundation could be so dumb sometimes. After at least okay, I'll give them three victims that ac accidentally died and you know this all of me. Why would you send, you know, four more? Seven, seven individuals got eaten up by this ball of meat. You send seven more individuals. After the first one, you guys should have stopped after, like, maybe two more. Come on, dude. Like, y'all don't really care about these people. <laughs> Time. During the course of its containment at the SCP Foundation, the room appears to have added multiple additional furnishings, including two lamps, a throw rug, a television, a radio, a beanbag chair, three books in an oh. unknown language, four children's toys, and a small <laughs> potted plant. Tests have been performed using a variety of non-human entities in order to... It's not an SCP... Or like a doll version of that SCP that like um the one from Doctor Hugh, <laughs> Hugh, who from Doctor Who, like bro. See if they would provoke a similar. I'm response to do that one next SCP time too. Zero zero two to that of humans. Various lab animals, including those with close DNA to humans, such as chimpanzees, have been placed in the room, but so far all have failed to make the living room react. Human Dang. cadavers were also tested. But they too did not produce any effect. Just sleeping it on it. What causes SCP-002 to engage in its behavior? But whatever process it uses to convert organic matter into furnishings seems to only be triggered by the presence of living human beings. SCP-002 was of discovered Portugal. in northern Portugal following reports of an object falling from Earth's orbit. Oh, uh, from there, space. In the of a small crater was SCP-002. SCP. It was encased in a thick shell of rock, but the anomaly's fleshy exterior could be seen through cracks that were likely created by the impact. Dang. A local farmer was the first to spot the object falling to Earth and brought word of what he found oh, to his village. Thought be a first victim. At the same time, a Level 4 SCP Foundation agent stationed in the area detected elevated levels of radioactivity and traced the source back to the crater. An SCP collection squad led by General Mulhausen was dispatched to the impact site and quickly secured the area. Dang. Test subjects from the nearby village were recruited for initial analysis of the object, with three men being individually sent inside of SCP-002, oh all of whom disappeared. Having confirmed this anomaly's deadly properties, 
General Mulhausen then issued a level 4A termination order that would apply to any local witnesses in order to ensure that no knowledge of the object reached the outside world. God. He then oversaw its transport to an SCP containment facility. As Foundation staff prepped SCP-002 nice. so for relocation, SCP. four members of the security personnel were seemingly mesmerized and drawn inside the object where they too disappeared. This was the first hint Whoa. that SCP-002 possesses in? some form of subtle mind control with the ability to influence humans into stepping inside of it. It was after these Damn. losses that it was first noticed that the object appeared to grow new furnishings following someone disappearing inside. After these mishaps, General Mulhausen ordered all staff to wear hazmat suits when dealing with SCP-002. And following the general's own termination, SCP-002 was placed in containment at the secure facility where it currently resides. Damn. Due to the ongoing danger presented by SCP-002, the risk it poses to any who step inside of it, and the mind control abilities it possesses, it has been classified as Euclid. It is to remain connected at all times to a suitable power supply to keep it in a charging mode of some kind, which appears to make it more docile. In the event of a power outage, staff in the immediate area are to be evacuated and the object's containment cell emergency barrier is to be closed, sealing it off from the rest of the site. Yeah, so if it's sealed off, it should be safe. I don't think, unless how far can his mind control reach people, you know? That's what we really need to find out. Once power is reestablished, strobing X-ray and ultraviolet lights are Whoa. to be activated in the containment cell until SCP-002 is returned to its charging mode. Research teams investigating SCP-002 that will come within 20 meters of the object must consist of no fewer than two members. Personnel should also maintain physical contact with one another at all times oh. to confirm that the other is present and not experiencing any feelings of confusion, dull perception, or other forms of bewilderment Pull back. that may lead to them entering the living room. Don't play. No personnel at all below a level 3 clearance are allowed inside of SCP-002, and any staff that have contact with the anomaly are to be escorted no less than 5 kilometers away and must undergo a 72-hour quarantine and psychological evaluation. Smart. SCP-002 is one of the oldest anomalies in the SCP Foundation, Zero Zero Two. Days, but remains one of the least understood. Perhaps hey. one day we'll understand what it is and why it was at one time sitting in the orbit of Earth. For real. Did someone send it here, intending us to one day find it? Did it come here of its own volition? Or did we put it there ourselves in an attempt to keep it away? Thanks for watching. Bro, that was dope. That was a good one. That was a good one. Hold on, let me see this one more time. We put it there ourselves. Oh, I notice. Oh, I guess he tries to hide its face every video. I never even paid attention to that. <laughs> it's always in the shadows. But anyway, with that being said, that ends today's episode at SCP-002, the living room. So this was this was good. Um, and it's cool to find out this is like one of the oldest SCPs. So it's awesome that is SCP-002. So yo, I know there's multiple um SCPs. SCP 001s, which is, doesn't make sense to me, but um, I guess there's just multiples of them. Hopefully, there's only one SCP 002, which kind of makes it kind of cool and like by itself because it is an old SCP and it might be the second one ever found. So, yo, like I, I had a great time reacting to this. Um, a lot of you know, made it made sense what happened to the humans, like they turned into f furniture, and it seems like a pretty easy one to like you know, keep in contained and like controlled because you could just shut the door put in a facility and like be about your day it wouldn't do any it can't move there's no information about it moving and we don't know how far his mind control you know will trigger people and it makes it seem like it will get triggered when they're like they're close to it not like when they're like hella far away so um yeah i feel like this is safe in my book but without all out the way let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and let me know if you guys like the video or not and if you did smash that like button and without all out the way, I hope you guys all have a phenomenal day. And that concludes today's episode. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.